So the, the Fastnet is one of the qualification races for the Vendée Globe. The, the race, is, the Vendée Globe entry is done on cumulative mileage. And between the start of this year and the race uh, start in 2020, I need to finish every Amoka Globe series race and the Fastnet is one of them. It was absolutely fantastic. Just, you know, we went into this race with a very, very honest appraisal of what we could do. Um, it, this is the oldest boat in the fleet. It's a year 2000 boat. And if you compare this boat to the likes of Chiral, you know, they're not the same. They're, they're not even close to being the same. They're the same length and that's about it really. So for us to compete against those guys is just not, not realistic. But there are older boats in the fleet. There are non-foiling boats in the fleet. And so we just wanted to, to do our best against those boats, but also to benchmark how this this boat could do um and yeah we were we were leading class in Wokka until four miles off the sillies we were ahead of all of those guys and it was just absolutely incredible we thought we'd done well we, we chose a different tactic we went further north we stayed close to the coast everybody else went out into the channel but when that position report came in it was yeah we were we were laughing a lot i was sailing with paul larson who holds the current world speed sailing record which he set in 2012 on sail rocket and it was just brilliant paul he he's a great guy to sail with he's always looking for ways to improve things ways to make the boat go faster he's always on and, and he just works with what he's got and it was so positive to spend time with somebody like that and and i really enjoyed it and to have all those multi-million euro boats behind you <laughs> we were that was one of the things we were laughing about was you know at one stage we were on, on we were winning on line on us we had rambler 88 behind us and and uh my computer um had crashed and i was navigating on my phone and and we were just laughing about the fact that i have uh i've got an old boat i've got an inherited sail wardrobe and i was navigating on my phone and yeah we, we're on a scratch budget and and we still led the fleet uh, I went to go and shift one of the spinnakers on the transom and I lifted it up and there was a swordfish that long underneath it. I felt a bit sorry for him, but anyway, I, I picked him up and uh, and I took him down to the GoPro and showed it to the GoPro, but I've lost the lost the footage of it, so the swordfish is not going to have his moment of glory, sadly. I mean, it, I tell you what, it's, it is a relentless race. You know, the, the gear changes were happening all the time. Uh, we had lots of fun and games with trying to get spinnakers up and down um, and just... Definitely coming into the sillies um, when we had all the fleet behind us. Uh, uh, Paul was sitting in the cockpit eating his breakfast um, and he, he turned around to me and he said, uh, so this is what I really enjoy in the morning. This is almost perfect. I've got porridge, I've got blueberries and I've got a view of the jackal over the transom. And that was our Mel Leclerc coming up behind us and, you know, 24 hours into the race. That was fantastic. Um, we made a few bloopers. I think we lost a place probably at the Sillies because we decided to go for the big kite. I think we got a bit ahead of ourselves um, and uh, we got the big kite completely out on deck, uh, ready to peel as we turn the corner and a big squall came through, um, completely soaked us. And we had the little kite on deck, we had the big kite on deck, we had pretty much every rope on the boat was on deck and tied up around each other in this big ball. And yeah, I think if you'd have zoomed in on the boat then and looked at us, you'd have wondered who we were because we definitely <laughs> didn't look like a couple of professionals. Didn't look like a masterclass. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. It really didn't. And um, and I tell you what, I've I've learned a few things uh, about the boat uh, stacking. For example, when one of those spinnakers bags gets full of water, I, I mean, I I was trying to lift one of them on my. I can't move it. I just can't move it. And and we we stacked all the kites on the back. And um, at one stage we were moving the stack from the stern up onto the quarter. And, and we pulled one spinnaker up together um, and Paul was tying it on and I went down to go and get the other one and, and it started slipping off the back and I, I just couldn't physically hold it and so I ended up sort of grabbing onto the traveller with my like knuckles and hooking the sail under my toes and it was sort of pulling out behind me and I was stretched out and going Paul you've got to come in now the sail's going the sail's going I, yeah without him I would have lost that sail without a doubt so that's a bit of an eye-opener for when I do the Vendée 
about stacking I think I need to go to the gym a bit more maybe eat a few more pies I don't know <laughs> I can't tell you how exciting it is to to be in control of a boat like this on your own it, I mean it is it is an enormous challenge everything about the Vendée is an enormous challenge you know I didn't start with a massive pot of money I've started with a boat and I'm asking people to invest in a in a project that's up and running, but that is a hard way to do things. It's really hard and I'm juggling a million things all day, every day. But every time I go sailing and doing a race like this, it just reinforces the fact that I am doing the right thing. This is just, it's gonna be incredible and I'm so looking forward to it. I'm I'm looking for a sponsor. So if, if anybody can spread the story, can talk to people, can just, just talk about who I am and, and how I'm sharing what I'm doing and, and what a great project this is, then that's a start. There's sharing, liking social media, but also um, we've got quite a novel funding strategy in that we, are, we have a, a business syndicate, which is effectively a club that small businesses can join for a small monthly contribution to the campaign. And in return, they get the kind of, uh, they get the kind of rewards that a big sponsor has. So they'll get time uh, on the boat they get invited to events um, but um, it's not the, the big ticket price for, for a title sponsor so you can find out details about that on my webpage which is Pit Pair Ocean Racing.